This is section 1.3 of Triola's Essentials 4th edition. In this section, um, we're going to first of all um, review the population in the sample. So let's first of all review the fact that the population is every single object or person within a um, within a defined set of characteristics that are ha or that has a certain defined set of characteristics. And from populations, we will get summary statistics that we call parameters. They aren't actually statistics, uh, summary statistics, they're summary parameters. Now, from the population, we will draw samples. The sample is a subset of the population. And from the sample, we will create summary statistics. And the statistics will tell us about the parameters. So we have the population to tell us, of, or the population which define, it has a set of defined characteristics, but we can't get to the entire population. Remember that was called a census. So what we do instead is the next best thing, we get a sample from the population and those that sample will be used to summarize and find statistics which then will tell us about the parameters of the population which is the um, things that we would like to know about our population. Now from there we're going to go and we're going to talk about the two main types uh, or two types of characteristics that data have. We have um, qualitative data also called categorical and attribute data. Your book now is using um, the word categorical more than it is using qualitative. Um, I have mixed feelings about that. I'm going to go ahead and continue with the word qualitative. So we have qualitative versus quantitative data. Um, the quantitative data is quantities, numbers, and the qualitative data describes qualities, its names, and that's why your book is starting to use categorical because it, it starts to tell you about the fact that it has categories for it or the, another word for it is attributes because attributes describe the things um, that something um, contains. So qualitative data, categorical or attribute data are all synonymous. That means they are the same thing. So quantitative data examples, we have height, um, weight, other measurements or counts. So quantitative, um, some specific examples would be the number of people in the room or the length of time between events. Uh, qualitative examples or categorical attribute data. Um, those would be things like good, bad, or excellent, yes or no, um, non-countable qualities, in other words, things that we can only define with a characteristic or a category. Um, now, we sometimes get a little bit confused between qualitative and quantitative because just because qualities are describing something does not mean they can't be numbers. So, for instance, a specific example would be zeros and ones denoting on and off in a computer. That's like a yes-no answer. Um, but they're denoted with numbers, but those mean, numbers don't have any meanings to us. They're just kind of placeholders, if you will. And then another one is rating on a zero to five scale. A lot of surveys ask you to rate things on a scale of one to five or one to ten or whatever it happens to be. So those are some of the examples with qualitative that you might not expect. Now, within quantitative data, so our quantitative data up here, which is actually numbers, quantitative data can have two subcategories within it um, that tells us about the types of numbers being used. We have discrete numbers and we have continuous numbers. So when we start talking about this, what we're really talking about is what we see on a number line. And on a number line, we see that um, we have information that comes at us with our integers, right? So here are our integers that we draw on the number lines. Well, the integers are the same thing as what we mean by discrete numbers, right? We can count these things. We have one or two or three of these. Or we, maybe we're talking about money and we're, we have negative one dollars in our account, meaning we're overdrawn on that account. Um, these are discretes. However, on the real number line, we also know that there is numbers in between here. So we may not have just 0 or 1, we may have 
uh, 0.4. So when we start talking about our money, we actually do get things like 0.4 dollars, or we have negative 1.25 dollars, or something like that. Now those are what we would call continuous. So the idea of continuous is all of the um, breakdown in between what we would call um, <clears throat> what we would call an integer on the um, on the number line or in talking about the types of real numbers. So we have continuous which have these in-betweens and then we have the discrete data and the discrete data is the stuff that we talk about in terms of real numbers where we only have whole numbers or we only have integers or we only have natural numbers. Those are the discrete ones. So that's what we talk about as a further breakdown of quantitative data. So when we talk about discrete examples, positive integers, um, they can't be 2.982. The number of people in the room are an example of a discrete integer, right? There's not 1.5 people in the room. There's either one per person or there's two per people in the room. A continuous example, these are real numbers, like we view on the number line. It's the length of time between events because this event could occur here and then this one could occur right here. The length of time between here is a continuous amount of time. Whereas when we have the people, right, there's either the one here or we have the two here, or the three here, etc., etc. The difference between discrete and um, and continuous. Now, the next thing that we want to discuss are um, characteristics of the data that re Triola refers to as levels of measure. There are four levels of measure, and the four levels of measure span the um, two distinct types of data, qualitative um, and quantitative. So I'm going to uh, bring up a little uh, visual here that I've drawn out um, on my pad to show you this. So what we have here is that we have quantitative data and we have qualitative data. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to erase this characteristics and I'm going to put in levels of measure as it should be. Um, and these four levels of measure, as I've drawn on this diagram, really do overlap between the two. So down here in the middle, you will see that you know there's um, the interval and the ratio underneath the quantitative, and the nominal and the ordinal underneath the qualitative. Remember, qualitative again can also mean. Um, that we're talking about categorical data. So let me just put that in there as well so you can have that as a reference. So categorical. And another name for categorical or quantitative is attribute. So that we'll get all those words up there one more time. Now once we have the fact that um, we do have these four levels of measure, and these four levels of measure can be separated into two with the qualitative, two with the quantitative, then it's time to talk about those four levels of measure. So our first two we'll talk about as qualitative, just names only, right? <clears throat> so we have nominal data and we have ordinal data. Nominal is the very, very most basic type of data. Names that have no meaning with respect to order. So they're names only. An example of nominal data would be colors. So if I'm going to talk about the M&Ms in a bag, I can talk about red M&Ms, green M&Ms, blue M&Ms, yellow M&Ms, brown M&Ms, right, so on and so forth. Those are names only. They're nominal data. Now the next thing that I might want to talk about is something that has a name, but there's an order associated with it. So one is higher than the other, even though it's just a name. So an example of that would be shirt sizes, right? Small, medium, large, extra large, so on and so forth. Now, when we start talking about these, um, these names that have order from for shirts, for example, from one manufacturer to another, the small, the medium, and the large may have different meanings for them. 
but everybody knows that if I buy a small shirt and I buy a medium shirt, that the medium shirt is indeed going to be larger than the small shirt. And likewise, if I buy a large shirt, it's going to be larger than the medium shirt, so on and so forth. So those things um, are what create the order to those. So that's ordinal data. Now both nominal and ordinal data are levels of measure that are qualitative, categorical attribute data. Now we're going to go talk about the uh, quantitative types. Now quantitative data, remember, is numbers, and these numbers actually do have meaning. So the first type, again, these have um, a hierarchy to them. They get um, more detailed as they go up. The first type is interval data. Interval data, we can we have numbers, so differences make sense. That's how we can tell a number is that if it makes sense um, to take a difference between them. So remember when I mentioned the um, with the qualitative data, we could use numbers like zero and one. Um, for the on and off. Well, the difference between 0 and 1 wouldn't make any sense if it meant on and off. And so that's how we can see that they're um, qualitative and not quantitative. So interval data has no natural 0, but those differences do make sense. An example of interval data is temperatures. Another is years. If you look at the different temperature scales that you can think of, say Celsius and Fahrenheit, you know that zero on the Celsius scale means that we have freezing of water. Zero on the Fahrenheit scale does not mean the same thing. 32 degrees Fahrenheit is where water freezes. So you see the zero is a very arbitrary um, assessment. The same is true in years. If we look at the Chinese calendar or the Mayan calendar or the calendar that we use or an older version, the Gregorian calendar, they all have different starting places, different zero years that mean something in their um, in their sphere, but not necessarily relating to one another. And that's what makes interval data interval data, no natural zero. The highest level of measure, the last level of measure, is ratio data. In ratio data, um, there is a natural zero, differences make, uh, make sense, and a ratio is possible. So um, if we want to know about ratio data, then um, what we lo a lot of times we'll do is we do a ratio test and we'll say, does it make sense to say this is twice that or this is half that or this is three quarters? And if the answer is yes, that's a pretty good indication that it's a ratio data. So um, when we say uh, the incomes of politicians, that is indeed the an income uh, ratio level of measure because one politician could make twice what another makes. Now another one, that one an example of the incomes was a continuous example. Uh, an example of a discrete ratio measure would be the number of yes votes. So if we had um, 25 people voted yes and uh, 12 voted no, well that can create a ratio and therefore we can say that those are indeed um, a ratio level of measure. So that is going to wrap up our, our um, section 1.3. If you would like a Another way of looking at this qualitative, quantitative um, information, I invite you to look at page 15 of uh, Triola's book. He has a nice little summary of the levels of measure. It's not as nice as the past ones. If I can find that and put that up for you or bring it to class for you, I'm, I will certainly do that because I'd like um, some of his past ex uh, examples, visual examples, a little bit better.